Tabda, Somalia. We touched down at the KDA Forward Operating Base, also known as an FOB. Sergeant Luryuki Kamau is in charge of a contingent of troops manning this watchtower. Our safety depends on him. Security atutasema niko sahi na kesho siku. So inakuwa 24-7 niki on. Lieutenant Adan Hassan Ali, a platoon commander here at the Tabda FOB, welcomes me into his trench. Sante. Karibu sana. This is where the soldiers come to rest in turns while on mission. There isn't much inside. But his role is even bigger. Kazi yangu hapa kama platoon commander ni command na control ya platoon kuangalia welfare ya askari yangu in terms of kuangalia moral yao eh, maybe upande wa passes na leaves na kuhakikisha kwamba askari wangu wako na moral wakati wote ili waweze kupigana hii vita. The soldiers need a boost of morale every minute. Their boss, Major Masese, is well aware of this. And we have a specialist among us ourselves who help in uh, guidance and counseling to help us identify any case of, uh, uh, you know, uh, psychological uh, effects. Like in their mental strength, they need good nutrition to ward off the enemy. Corporal Evans Wekesa is the man in charge of the kitchen in this base. Don't be fooled. He is not just confined to his culinary matters. Vita ikianza kule mbele. Sitategemea ati mimi ni chef, siwezi kwenda kupigana. Niko na tactics ambazo naweza kwenda kule mbele, nisaidie wenzangu kuendelea kupigana. In the spirit of the tradition back at home, our microphone provided him with an opportunity to send greetings. Salamu zangu zinaenda kwa sister zangu, brother zangu, mali ambapo wako, na baba mzee mzazi mali ambapo wako. Kwa bahati mbaya mama alikuja aerial surveillance is key enemy is sophisticated and sometimes better prepared this yy helicopter flying low according to the in charge major simon agunda this is a strategy of war when the ashabab are holding the rpg they can't hold it and fire it at a, at a lower angle. It will burn him down there. The backflash will burn him. Agunda maintaining that his toy is cut for the job, it does. They don't even have a page alone. They have a, a weapon called ZU. It's an anti-aircraft. Several times they are fired to us when we go for missions. When they conduct the ambushes, they come with it. But we've always been up to the game and up to the task. For the soldiers here, the fall of darkness is even a major test of their resolve to keep the insurgents at bay. Simulation exercises oftenly done. With it comes heavy and more complicated artillery. We are advised to keep our cool in its presence. Well, that is the amount of firepower the enemy is met with whenever they cross the lines of the Kenya Defense Forces on the front line here in Somalia. The tank missile is considered the deliverer of the last blow. Living and interacting with the local residents also provides an edge to the troops. They have become a rich source of intelligence. And with the heavy rains currently pounding the area, the troops are working even harder to win the hearts of the locals. We wade through the mud and water in the flooded town of Afnodor. 
In addition to the field combat that confronts them in the FOBs, the Kenya Defense Forces also reaches out to the community here in Afmedo in medical camps free of charge like you're about to see. The weekly camp is a welcomed gesture by the locals. Wanabima watu wengi msana tunachukuru. Walo wenzangu wasaidia watu wengi sana kama watoto, wa mama, na kama sisi hata Captain Robert Simba is the leading doctor. He says the rains have come with its own fair share of challenges. The floods, not only in Kenya but also here, it has also come with the waterborne diseases. Uh, like uh, two weeks ago, there was uh, acute uh, diarrhea cases. In Doble, KDF has set up a 20-bed capacity health center, equivalent to a level 2 hospital treating both locals and troops. With all these systems working, Somalia is now grappling with the reality of a slip to lawlessness come 2020, when the African Union forces are expected to finally wrap up their mission. This follows the ratification of the United Nations Security Council Resolution 3272 that calls for a conditional drawdown of the forces in Somalia. It will be detrimental and it will hold the efforts we have had and the blood will spill in this country will go down the drain in the event for further drawdown without specifics being addressed. If for example we say we are going to leave specific sectors or specific uh, uh, formed uh, FOBs for, for, for the local forces to take over this for special security, then uh, we will expect those forces to be available. Already, 1,000 troops were withdrawn in 2017, with another 1,000 expected to be pulled out this year. The sea is one of the areas Amisom apportions most of its success. Daily marine patrols have secured the coastline of pirates. As Amisom troops continue to patrol the sea to ensure all is secure here, one of the sticky conditions remain, can SNA do this even as they forge an exit strategy? We're still facing difficulties and challenges uh, because Somalia is a big, big country and there are many spaces where Ashabab can hide. But the war is mutating by the day. A United Nations minesweeper training session is underway. And with this, the forces have been able to avert 17 IED attacks this year. From mine detectors to these remote controlled vehicles, the extent to which the changing face of terrorism has taken the forces. From the trenches to the battle front lines combating heavy fire from the enemy, the Kenya Defense Forces troops are out here to make sure that you back at home are safe. Hassan Mugambi, Citizen TV, Tabda, Somalia.